Some hot tempers in New York City as a cop killer is about to get paroled. John Shumo from Chasing News joins us right now. John, a lot of, a lot of heat on this story. Tell us what you got. That's right, George. At this moment, Herman Bell is scheduled for release Friday, 5 p.m. The former Black Liberation Army member uh, who murdered three police officers was granted parole after serving 44 years. On Friday, a judge in Albany upheld the parole board's controversial decision. In 1971, Bell and two other men lured the police to a Harlem housing development with a phony 911 call and then ambushed officers Joseph P. Agantini and Waverly Jones. Jones was killed instantly. Piagentini begged for his life while being shot 22 times. While on the run months later, Bell took part in another cop assassination in San Francisco. Police union president Pat Lynch took out radio ads trying to put pressure on the parole board to keep Bell behind bars. Take a listen. The PBA is fighting this terrible parole board decision to release cop killer Herman Bell. His murdering pal and many other cop killers will be up for parole soon. New York City police officers need your help. This sends a very bad message. I mean, if you kill a police officer, there's a chance that you're going to get out. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, anybody who commits murder should not be allowed out because their victim will never be able to be free again. Their victim is never breathing again. So, uh, you know, we don't really use the death penalty here. So this has got to be something that we can do. The PBA also collected hundreds of thousands of signatures on a petition to try to influence the parole board. It didn't matter. Bell expressed remorse in recent years. Now 70 years old, he told the parole board, he's changed. You would want me to be your neighbor. You would want me to be your friend. They believed him. His supporters say continuing to incarcerate a man who earned college degrees while in prison was unwarranted. But not everyone thinks Bell deserves freedom. John, thanks so much for that. And we'll go right back to the A-plus panel. We'll start with uh, with Randy Thompson, our human rights advocate here. Um, he's a cop killer. They basically tortured one guy to death by shooting him 22 times. Does this man deserve parole? Well, I mean, the question should be more, does anyone who killed another human being in such a vicious way deserve to be free after such a period of time? And the fact is, they do look at the the facts of the matter and they do make these decisions sometimes it's very emotionally difficult but keep in mind family members the kids of one of the dead cops actually are advocating for his release as well they said after this amount of time we the only point in keeping him in jail is for scorn and our family does not need nor want that well peter i mean what do you what do you think on this issue because i mean is this the guy you want to be your neighbor i mean this isn't mr rogers now this guy was part of a uh, double cop assassination in new york city well, what what is your feeling on should he be should he be given a chance at parole this is a case that's taking place even before I was born, so I don't know the details of this case. What I do know is that when we send people away to prison, what we want to do is have some form of rehabilitation. You know, and if this uh, gentleman met that bar and if the parole uh, board felt like he deserved to be released, I think, you, you know, this is something that's warranted. Well, Laura, real quick, because you know, there is no death penalty for stuff like this, but a, this is a crime that in many parts of the country would probably be met with the death penalty. How do you feel on an issue like this? Because you know, time tends to soothe things over a little bit, but maybe not so much for people or, or policemen who were part of that, that uh, squad well, sure. back in the day. Sure, George. And, and there's no question that this was a horrific crime. And that's not really even the point here. The point is we have parole laws. And if we're not going to actually use them across the board, then we, there's no point in even having Having them. The parole board is an independent body that heard the evidence and in their discretion, they decided as an independent body that this was the right thing to do. And I think that the board probably went into it skeptically as we would because the crime was so bad. But if this is what they decided, then I'd like to see that carried out. And finally, John, back to you. you know, as reporters, we're not supposed to have opinions when we're trying to cover stuff like this. But this has got to be A, difficult to cover, but B, where do you see it going if this gentleman gets parole? It looks like he's going to get parole. I don't think there's any other option to uh, sort of stop this from happening. It'll be interesting to see if there's any sort of continued uh, attacks on him after he gets out or whether he goes quietly uh, and tries to resume his life. Uh, Governor Cuomo was asked about this, and he said he would not have made this decision. And Police Commissioner James O'Neill said uh, that Bell's mind has not changed, his heart has not opened. Uh, but again, the Independent State Parole Board said that uh, Bell paid his debt to society, and he is now going to become a free man. I have a feeling this story will not be over even as of the end of this week. John Shimo, thanks. A-plus panel, thanks very much as well.